I'm going to call this meeting of the Brawley City Council and Successor Agency to Brawley Community Redevelopment Agency special meeting uh, March 15, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. And call to roll call, please. The minutes will reflect all council members present. Okay. Invocation. Luke, could I call on you? That's all stand. <clears throat> Let's pray. Almighty God, gracious Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you again tonight for this opportunity to, to gather together to direct our city. We ask that you would give us wisdom from above, that you would give us discernment and intuition as to the decisions that we have to make and that we would uh, be able to see uh, into the future as well as possible what uh, the ramifications of our decisions are. We ask that you would continue to bless our city uh, with good days ahead in spite of the economic times, in spite of the pandemic, and we thank you that little by little we're coming out of that. We ask that you would watch over our proceedings this evening, that you would heal those that are sick, that you would protect uh, the residents of our city and watch over our, our staff and our employees. We thank you for all of your blessings, and we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <clears throat> You're welcome. Okay. I'll entertain a motion for the approval of the agenda. I'll move to approve so the agenda moved. as written. Do I have a second? Oh, okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion carries. Okay, we're going to go to item two, which is our closed session. Yes. So we will be returning shortly, hopefully. I can go into our, uh, my office. Go into um, Reconvene to open session. Report any action taken in closed session, if any. Uh, there was no action taken. Uh, information was provided to the city council by special legal counsel. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we're going to go to item four then, and that's our public appearances and comments. Not to exceed four minutes. This is the time for the public to address the council on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. Uh, we will recognize you when you come to the microphone. Please state your name for the record. You are not allowed to make any personal attacks on individuals or make comments which are slanderous or which may invade an individual's personal privacy. And please direct your questions and comments to the city council. And the first item um, I'm going to do, uh, first off, I think I'll ask, does anybody have any item they need to come forward for public appearances or comments that is not on our agenda? Hi, Mayor, Council, uh, and staff. Uh, I'm George uh, with Re George Taylor with Republic Services. Uh, I am just here to announce our uh, spring cleanup. Uh, we had tried to get that uh, for April uh, 9th. That didn't work out, so we are looking at a May 7th date. Uh, it, this uh, spring cleanup will be conducted again at our landfill. Um, uh, I tried to, uh, we are um, looking at uh, and were asked to do it at the airport. Uh, we will uh, um, look at that um, when we can do it in the fall. Um, it takes some planning to do this, and so we just needed a little more time since uh, it's not just uh, get the drivers in and get them over to the airport. Um, so we've got to work around vacations and equipment needs and all of that stuff. So. This spring, it'll be May 7th, and then in the fall, um, we'll uh, discuss with staff to, to see if we can get it at the airport. Seems like that's what uh, uh, the city wants. Okay? Any questions? That's good. All Any right. questions good. from council? Okay. Yes, sir. What's the difference between just us driving up on any normal day versus uh, May 7th? Well, there shouldn't be any because most of the uh, residents have four free passes to, uh, to take their material there. Uh, the, the only uh, thing that we do will have available that we don't normally have available is uh, IVRMA will be there, so we'll be able to accept electronics and oh, cool. uh, and tires, uh, which we don't normally accept uh, on our regular uh, landfill days. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comments other than the ones that I have listed here that we'll be going through? Anybody else? Okay. If not. Then we'll move forward to item 4D, which is the proclamation designating April 
2022 as Autism Awareness Month and April the 2nd, 2022 as World Autism Awareness Day in the city of Brawley. And we will be presenting a proclamation to Gloria Brambilla. And I will read the proclamation. Uh, whereas autism is the result of a neurological disorder that affects the normal functioning of the human brain and can affect anyone regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, or socioeconomic background, and whereas symptoms and characteristics of autism may present themselves in a variety of combinations and can result in significant lifelong impairment of an individual's ability to learn, develop healthy interactive behaviors, and understand verbal as well as nonverbal communication, and whereas the autism spectrum disorder, ASD, is a reality that affects millions of families every day and more children are being diagnosed, resulting in rates as high as one in 44 children nationally with four times greater prevalence among boys than girls, according to the Centers for Disease Control. And whereas the effort to address autism continues and doctors, therapists, and educators can help persons with autism overcome or adjust to its challenges and provide early, accurate diagnosis, appropriate educational intervention and therapy that are vital to future growth and development. And whereas the city of Brawley, California proudly supports the annual observance of Autism Awareness Month and World Autism Awareness Day in the hope that it will lead to a better understanding of the autism spectrum disorder, celebrating the work of advocates, professionals, and family members, and all who work to build a brighter tomorrow alongside those with autism. Now, therefore, be it resolved, I, Sam Couchman, Mayor of the City of Brawley, hereby proclaim April 2022 as Autism Awareness Month and April 2nd, 2022 as World Autism Awareness Day in the City of Brawley to raise public awareness and acceptance of autism and the myriad of issues surrounding the disorder, as well as to increase knowledge of the programs that have been and are being developed to support individuals with autism and their families. And I set here unto, set my hand and caused the seal, the city of Brawley to be affixed on this 15th day of March, 2022. And so uh, we have a proclamation to present. And I'd be happy to do that. Uh, do we have a representative here? I'm gonna go ahead and invite mm -hmm. our exactly. Please. And Would you like to say a few words before sure, we present? Sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Mayor, uh, City of Brawley, for having us here. Um, ever since uh, 2017, you guys have been on board and have been so kind, and you guys have lit up your gazebo blue in the past. I do have, if you like to pass them out, kind of explains a little bit of why we did the blue. Um, but in reality, you can light it up rainbow color if you want. That's how our children are. They're diverse, and they have just, you know, an abundance of shine and ray. Um, I am a mom of five, uh, one of my boys, I have all sons, one of them has autism, he's nine years old. And um, I think we put our best step and face forward um, every day. And we bring the best for our families and for our children that also depend on our support. And just like we have here, Mr. Gonzalez of Autism Support and Ms. Santillan of Respite, which is, um, you know, an agency that helps our children uh, when we get a small break, you know. Um, last year, I think it was probably, they're all special, all proclamations, but it was one of the neatest for me. It was over Zoom. And I think at that time, Mr. Hamby was mayor and he had no idea who I was. So he's like, who's this going out to, Brambila? And that was really special because it didn't matter who I was, it was still, you know, presented. It didn't matter that I wasn't from an organization or, and this effort I began it as a mom, as a parent, um, with a lot of pain. So I turned my pain into power and I said, okay, how am I going to help my child and any child that needs me? So I worked for the county 20 years and I decided it was, I didn't resign. I mean, I didn't get to retire. I resigned, um, gave up my benefits, gave up everything, uh, to advocate to be close to my child and to advocate voluntarily uh, for anybody. Not just my child, it's all children. Uh, disabilities or no disabilities, elderly, anyone. You know, and that's what you do as a human being, it's just you're there for whoever needs you. But, um, so that's what I do now. And I try to go every year throughout every single city and I was so happy we hit Hopeville last night and it was the first year 
So to be the first, you know, on record and to do all of this is awesome. Mm -hmm. But um, we can't do it without these agencies that are here to support our children and offer. We have several now. Thank goodness we have several. Mm -hmm. um, some mm -hmm. are not present, and hopefully they'll be able to make it to the other. Um, so just thank you. I, I'm always nervous. It never goes away. My ears get really red <laughs> every time I'm not a public <laughs> speaker. But thank you, Ms. Benavides. Thank you, Madam Clerk, for always being so helpful and um, placing this on your agenda with the approval of your okay. mayor. Thank you, Mayor. And I, I think they may want to, yeah. I would love to see Katie. Katie's another, um, Ms. Santillan and Mr. Santillan are, um, and uh, Councilman Castro can attest to that, are very behind the scenes. They donate, like you have no idea, to our um, organizations that help our children. And I'm not just talking small amounts, huge amounts that help them, you know, with their programs and, and you know, and she doesn't say a word and does what she does out of her heart, but it's, it's to be known, you know, a lot of times, you probably don't know about me because I am behind the scenes as well. That's what I did at probation. Not anymore. <laughs> well, that's what I did at probation. I, I worked a lot for my bosses and behind the scenes, and, and I liked it that way. And I continue to do that. If I can help out and help out an organization rise and then move forward to another one in another you know area or do whatever. So right now I'm focused on Westmoreland. Mm -hmm. That's where the need is with our babies, and, and that's what I'm doing. But mm -hmm. I've, I've been part of most of the organizations by now. Nice. Come on up, Thank you for having us. Yeah. Good evening. I know most of you, and if I don't, I'm getting to know you right now. I'm Katie Alcantara Santillan. I'm with Imperial Valley Respite, and that's one company that we own that uh, delivers and pr uh, provides services throughout the state of California. So we have three companies that actually go all the way to Oakland. We serve uh, Corona, all the San Bernardino Riverside area, and all of San Diego area. Mm -hmm. So just in our companies, we serve over 6,000. Uh, developmental disabled children, and I would say at least 2,000 are autism. Wow. So we do have a lot that we have to do. And, you know, Gloria is very humble and very quiet, and she's talking about me and <laughs> and right here, Mr. from the autism. I'm sorry. And she's, and, you know, she's very quiet. And right now she surprised me of having to open a reading, um, actually a service area in Westmoreland. And this is her. She's very quiet, very humble, doesn't care about the limelight. And you know, I like those individuals at times. And when I say at times, is I wish she would be a little bit more forward and say, you know what, I'm doing the best. And it, we learn. We learn because she has a child and she's learned how to give back instead of staying in the corner and saying, I'm not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. But she is. So I do appreciate the proclamation because she's earned it. <laughs> okay, we're just a shadow behind her. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much, and thank you for the audience that, you know, that support our developmental disabled uh, population and community. We really thank you from the bottom of our hearts because they need it. They're the special angels. We're the ones that have to earn our wings. They've earned them already. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, council members, Mayor Coachman, Couchman, excuse me. Uh, I'm also nervous, so you know, give me just a little bit of a break. Um, my name is James Gonzalez. I'm president of Autism Support of Peel County. Been there for since uh, 2009. We're a small parent support group, nonprofit organization, and we try sharing information in order for parents to be able to um, obtain services through um, uh, San Diego Regional Center and other service providers to we kind of guide them help them see what they need We've all been there as parents So we don't want to sit there and have other parents make the same mistake We try to guide them give them information who to talk to even call people direct Hey, you know call the top guy direct call the top gal direct. Let's get these things done These are services that that our children need and that's what we try to help parents do um, It's it's all volunteer None of, our, none of our board members get paid at all. We all do this service out of the kindness of our heart, um, and we spend a lot of hours trying to get it done. Um, as a matter of fact, we're working right now to get a um, autism awareness fair in the city of Imperial 
on April 9th. We're hoping to have a lot of service providers out there. So that way the parents can talk one-to-one -one with service providers. And it's a family event. It's an Easter event. So we're hoping to have some music, some food vendors out there. It's, it's kind of it's kind of like a farmer's market, but for um, parents that need information in regarding services. So we're gonna we're inviting all the, the service providers out there. Um, a lot of them should have received an email from me already, so I'm hoping that they, they reach back out to me. Um, but we're, it's one of those things that we're trying to get out there, trying to get information, and, and just helping the parents, as, as our name says, you know, Autism Support of Imperial County. Um, we, today, we just received a... Um, and you know, it, it's it's one of those things. And, and excuse me, I'm I'm uh, um, a letter of recognition hmm. from um, the county of San Diego um, for all the the work that we did distributing PPEs, not only throughout Imperial County, you know, hand delivering them. We also delivered them in Brago Springs, which is a part of San Diego County, and in Mecca, which is a part of Riverside County. This is something that that we did because we knew we had to do it, um, and we we put full effort into our community and this is things that we we want to make sure that we do every day for our community and like I said we all do it as a volunteer so it, it's it's really important for us to, to get out there and, and help our community just like you guys do in the city council you know we we do it out here and in, 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 uh, in the community in different ways so thank you very much for giving me your time thank you thank you let's do that Is that what you were doing? Yeah, man. Finally, I somehow ended up on the end. You ended up on the front. It's easier to do it. Right. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Add just one quick thing, really quick. Sure. I was talking to Mr. Hamby, and we are trying to organize something um, for the city of Brawley for April. Um, and um, this is something I forgot to mention. Again, the nerves. Sorry about that. Um, but we're trying to see if there's anything we can do to organize a, an autism awareness event for the city of Brawley. Um, like I said, like I just mentioned, we had some, something going on for Imperial. Uh -huh. But there's more than one weekend in, in April. So if there's something we can do, I know I've been in touch with, uh, with Mr. Hamby in regards to it, Councilmember Hamby. So I'm, I'm hoping we can, we can um, reach something and, and get something done in the, in the city of Brawley as well. That like would be great. Make sure we're covering our north end as well as our mm -hmm. as all. That would be very that. nice, I think, right. for everyone involved. Thanks. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. We'll move to item 4E, which is a proclamation presented to Brawley Union High School wrestler Savannah Gomez, presented by Mayor Sam Couchman. So, and I'll read the proclamation. Whereas Savannah Gomez was born in Calexico and is a Brawley Union High School senior, and whereas Savannah Gomez has been involved in jiu-jitsu, Brawley Gladiators, and the BUHS wrestling team, and whereas Savannah Gomez took first place on February the 26th, 2022, in the state CIF wrestling tournament at the Mechanics Bank Arena in Bakersfield, California, and whereas Savannah Gomez won the 138-pound in the USA Wrestling Junior and 16-under Junior National Championships in Fargo, North Dakota in July 20, 2021 and is ranked third in the nation. And whereas Savannah Gomez has been a member of the BOHS wrestling team for three years, and whereas it is important to recognize the contributions of youth in our community. Now, therefore, as a token of our appreciation, the Brawley City Council proclaims March 3rd, 2022 as Savannah Gomez Day in the city of Brawley. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Brawley to be fixed on this third day of March, 2022. And so in recognition of that, uh, we had the proclamation to, to re-give you because I think we did give this to you at the high school, but we'll do this here in our meeting now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
So let's all go down and do it. I just want to thank you, Mayor and City of Brawley, for giving me this proclamation. It's an honor to be receiving this today. Um, I feel very grateful to be in here with all of you. I may not know all of you, but <laughs> I'm still very grateful for this opportunity. I hope to keep putting Brawley and making it known for girls wrestling and making people known in Brawley. I'll keep continuing the hard work and to make my town proud and make everyone in the Imperial Valley proud. Thank you again. Thank you very much. And, uh, good job. Would, Mr. Good would job. Mr. Brewer like to come up and say a few words? I think yeah. some of the credit. Oh, wow. we want to hear. Some hear. some of the credit has to go to the high school and the community and all of this, yeah, come on. along with the yeah. student and the wrestler. Credit goes to the one just walked up. There. Absolutely. You know, she's only a junior, by the way. I know. She's, she's a junior in high school, and, and hopefully, to I don't want to put any pressure here to be our first Olympian that comes through this town. So we're excited <laughs> about we're excited about her. She's on the national level, and that's a big deal. So thank you, City Council, for always supporting our kids, and. Uh, Tyler, every all of you that do the fields, the swimming pool, I mean, we could go on and on. But, you know, we have a, a great relationship, and that will never end. And I, I just want to say thank you. And that's Dude. what it produces right there. So Dude. thank you, guys. That's all part of a community effort. Oh, yes. Awesome. I, I, I can't wait. I just got it. It's, it's just incredible. Um, Savannah, what an accomplishment. And, and again, the hours of, of just, you know, practice, training, uh, I'm sure all the stuff you do. And, I'm you know, we've got to remember she's a student. Um, and just doing that is just such a great example for all our kids in this community and really the Valley. So very, very proud of you. Um, very, and, and a huge, you know, I think testimony to your, to your mother, to your family, uh, for supporting you every step of the way. So, um, just, just very proud and we're going to be following you. It's a big, big deal. By the way, I have been to Fargo. I kind of know what it's like there. Um, the dome football's really big there. Um, but I'll tell you what's as big, if not bigger, it's going to be wrestling and hockey in that part of the country. Mm -hmm. So, um, thanks for putting Brawley on the map out there. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll share my Go comments. Uh, Savannah, congratulations and thank you for the work that you're doing. You know, motivation is one thing, right? But having the commitment and dedication is something that only comes from you, right? And so, uh, congratulations. You're making your community proud, your family proud, you're making us proud. And uh, I wish you uh, a lot of success. You know, but really having that, that uh, the commitment and the dedication is very important. Keep that up. You're going to go uh, very far in life. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. Ed, I uh, just want to uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for allowing me to represent you at the pep rally, which I hadn't been to one in yeah. long time. Since I graduated yeah. high school, like 10 years ago. But it was honestly, it was a pleasure to meet you, Savannah. I, you know, I, would, I thought I was going to get, you know, the opposite of her, which is, you know, the typical, the male wrestler, right? <laughs> um, and now she's so, you know, quiet and humble and, and you can tell just focus. Uh, thank you for the hard work and thank you for putting us on the map. We were super proud. I, I had the goosebumps when I was there and you couldn't tell, but yeah, I was like super nervous as well. So, but thank you for everything and, and thank you for allowing us to be there. Yeah, yeah I, I just want to say this, this kind of a meeting is, is something that I really like. These kinds of proclamations are, it just shows what um, our community is capable of. And, and congratulations, Savannah, that's awesome that you're representing us that way. And, and also thank you to Katie and Gloria and to James for um, the hard work that you all do 
um, on behalf of the special needs community here in Brawley and throughout the valley. Um, it's just this is this is heartwarming to have um, you know this kind of this caliber of resident and community member here with us tonight. So thank you all. Yeah, these are both individual and community involvement and efforts, mm -hmm. and I think we're successful at that. As a small fan of Brawley Union High School. I find that <laughs> that, that I, I love things that we get positive from Brawley Union High School, and we see a lot of them, and I think we have to focus on those. And so everything's good. I congratulate you on your victories, and hopefully you'll have many more in the future. So thank you very much, and thank you for being here, because yeah, you had to make you. an effort, I know, to come in here Certainly. for the meeting. And the thanks to Bruce. Mr. Brewer. M Mr. Mayor, I, I can, I, I'm sorry, there's just even an extra second, but um, obviously the coaching staff too, just the, the, the we have, it's literally a dynasty, um, Brawley Wrestling. I yes, mean, I think is. that's well known. And, and um, uh, Mr. Brewer has been a part of that for, for many, many years. And, and so, um, again, to have a star like Savannah rise from that program shouldn't be a complete shock that we've had this generational program. So just huge um, hats off again to that program in general. So, Mr. Mayor, I think both groups that came up are a really good representation of the Correct. things that this community does. So I, I would like to give them a round of applause again. for Okay. For yeah. If I may say one more thing, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, I just we didn't get the opportunity. Well, to ask politicians start. Yeah, one I, know, I just want. I do have to say thank you. I do. I'm saying. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Gloria. Congratulations on this proclamation. And and yeah, you're right. I am. I have been witness firsthand of of the kindness of the uh, Alcantara Santillan family. Um, they're angels to our community. I can't. I, I can't say enough. Right. Um, I came around them uh, because of the work I do with veterans. And just to see the passion, the, the, la uh, the love, the compassion, I would say, and the empathy for all those who, who have less, um, it's rare, uh, uh, especially, if, you know, just anywhere. I, I don't run into that. It's very unique. So thank you. Thank you for being here, Katie. Uh, should, should we adjourn? Mr. Mayor, one more. We're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I said we just end the meeting. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's calling. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta continue. Do a micro? We've got to continue the meeting. Right, yeah, okay. Exactly. Okay. Well, thank you all for being here. Thank on you. That. Okay. All right. And so now we'll go to item number five, which is our consent agenda. <coughs> Make a motion and to approve the consent agenda as written, Mr. Okay. Second. There's a second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. <laughs> Right. We don't get to the no, no, no more talking. Uh, okay, number, <laughs> item number six is the city manager report. We'll let them exit. And then hey, we'll... I had. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, uh, just a few items. Uh, we have an announcement and then an update and uh, a uh, coming attractions. Okay. Um, uh, the update first. Uh, tomorrow, in conjunction with uh, the Chamber of Commerce for Greater Brawley, uh, Carmen Espino, our accounting assistant, assistant along with Carla uh, Romero, will be presenting at a workshop at the at the chamber to, uh, on uh, on how to get a business license in the city of Brawley, uh, the requirements that are required, the proper steps, and so that's will be a great event for tomorrow, cool. uh, at 9 a.m. and uh, um, so that's that announcement. Uh, an update, uh, back in December of this last year, 2021, uh, you council had approved a traffic signal assessment to be uh, performed by one of our uh, local, well, not a local, but the consultant. In early February, the consultant completed the signals, uh, traffic signal assessment. Uh, the cost came back in and excluding hardware, uh, the cost of repairing and or replacing the traffic signals is in to about the tune of a million dollars. Public Works, they have submitted a CMAC application to ICTC for funding on this project. Our Mayor Pro Tem is, is uh, on that board. And we should have word on if that proposal was selected by the end of this month or potentially early April. Uh, lastly, uh, for coming attraction on the next agenda, uh, next council meeting April 5th, uh, there, there will be a request for a mural on uh, downtown, um, downtown area. Uh, they presented for your approval and comments. Uh, I've seen that. It's, it's very neat. Um, I'm also asking if we could maybe, if it's the council's desire to a direction to, for staff to maybe at that time propose on how to how handle these things in the future, maybe a mural committee or, or an art community and what that uh, would look like, if that's of interest to the council. 
we can start working on that to present to you guys at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. That would be fine. That's okay. Good. Okay. I, I, I have not made comments on that because I wanted to see it come before us and then we can ask some questions. I do have some questions, maybe some concerns uh, regarding that and certainly a, a policy would probably be the best thing because pretty soon, we'll, you know, murals can get out of hand too. So, so we want to make sure that we do that correctly and then protection for that mural. How do we protect it from graffiti, vandalism, et cetera? I think that's an important important part to look at. It looked like a good mural, but I, I haven't really commented, as I said. When it comes back to the meeting, I'll make some comments at that time. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Any other questions from any, for the city manager? No? Okay. Okay, we'll go to item number seven, regular business. Uh, and up to, uh, item 7A is an update on the City of Brawley declaration of local emergency as a result of COVID-19 pandemic by a Chief Mike York. Fire Chief, I'm sorry. Fire Chief Mike York. Good evening, Mayor Cashman, City Council, and City staff. Mike York, Fire Chief. Uh, the update for tonight is going to be very brief. What we're seeing throughout our county is our numbers reducing. Um, for reference, our tier metrics are approximately one third of what they were at the last report on um, March 1st. Um, the probably only notable thing is more of a data collection, data uh, presentation. The Imperial County Department of Public Health dashboard for COVID 19. As of last Thursday, will no, long, no longer list the local hospital data. Um, you ha they instead refer you to the uh, state of California website um, that has some of the data, but not all of it. Um, but they're just uh, in part of the process of streamlining the information that goes out um, locally. Our variant, da uh, variant data, um, other than seeing rises in the Delta and Omicron, uh, basically we've hit that in stride. There's been no changes for the other tracked variants in over four weeks. So we have moved on that we are in the Delta slash Omicron world and um, we're starting to see Delta variant um, starting to slough off and of course the Omicron uh, trending and I'm sure as this goes on, we'll probably have another variant in the future that we'll be tracking as well. If there's any questions, I'll do my best to answer. It, it appears that our, um, you have 12 currently hospitalized, according to your report here. Yes, That's sir. That's down quite a bit from what it was. That is down an awful lot from just recent um, just two recent months reports. ago, right? Yes. Yeah, just two months ago. I mean, it's really down. So I think that's positive. I mean, we'll see what happens that come fall. But I mean, for right now, I think we're in good shape. Yes, sir. And um, one one important piece of information uh, now that that our public is being directed away from the Imperial County dashboard, the state dashboard will only show the the number of available ICU beds. It does not discern between the ICU beds being taken by COVID versus um, all the various other reasons. Oh, it just gives us the three just that the are number available. available ICU beds. Okay. The number of hospitalized confirmed COVID cases is accurate and reported okay. the same way. Okay. Perfect. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Item 7B, discussion and potential action to approve the Chamber of Commerce for Greater Brawley's request to close Main Street between North and South Plaza at select intersections as delineated in the attached map to hold their annual Imperial Valley Taco Festival. Waive the street closure fee and 1C, the sale of alcohol during the festival and approve the sale of alcohol during the festival presented by Rachel Fonseca, Parks and Recreation Manager. Rachel. Good evening, members of the council. Rachel Fonseca, Parks and Recreation Manager. Parks and Rec received a request from the chamber to hold their annual taco festival on Main Street on May 5th. They have three requests for council's approval, permission to close Main Street and some surrounding streets as seen as in red marks on the map. A waiver of the $500 street closure fee and permission to sell alcohol. These are three separate action items that are outlined as items 1A, 1B, 1C on the staff report. And the chamber is here for any questions you may have. Okay. Uh, questions with respect to timing. Is it the same times we followed in the past? Yes. W even the alcohol? Correct. All right. I'll make a motion to approve items uh, 7B, 1A, and 1 B, and then we'll do the second one separate. Okay. Okay. That's probably a good idea. Yes. It's a motion. So a motion for 1A, approval of 1A and 1B. Okay. Yeah, I'll second that. I have a second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Mr. Mayor, I'll also make a motion to approve item B1C. 
Okay. And that's the sale of alcohol during the festival. And so, uh, do I have a second? I'll second that. Second that one. Okay. So, any, any for all, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Okay. One nay. Okay. So, motion carries. Okay. Okay. So you have your approval. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Okay. Item 7C, discussion and potential action to adopt resolution, uh, resolution of the City Council of the City of Brawley, California to oppose Initiative 21-0042A1 presented by Carla Romero, Finance Director. Hello, good evening, Council Members. I am here uh, to present to you a request for your support and approval to adopt resolution opposing the initiative 21-0042A1, also known as the Tar Taxpayer Protection and Government Accountability Act. So we'll go over, um, I just have a couple of slides to go over what it is that the initiative encompasses and why it is that we're asking for your support to oppose the initiative. I'm not used to not having the partition here. <laughs> I know. <it's> weird. <laughs> um, so we are asking you to oppose the initiative because it threatens the local government's um, ability to tax uh, services and provide services to the city. Um, it really imposes stricter regulations re and requirements in order to have new tax measures be approved. Uh, part of the regulations would mean that all tax measures, future ones, would require a sunset and reoccurring voter approval. As you know, that is time consuming, mm -hmm. it is costly, and it is financially disruptive to the organization because we're not able to plan long term as those initiatives um, go to sunset. Uh, they also would require citizen initiatives to have a two-thirds vote, a uh, higher threshold than the 50% plus one. Um, this one's important. Annexations would require a separate voter approval um, if that portion of the city was to be annexed. So what that means is they don't automatically get yeah. the taxes that all the other residents have. You right. have. They would have to vote separately in order to be incorporated into the tax bracket of the city mm -hmm. that the other taxpayers pay. And so um, that comes into effect with the next slide of who's supporting this tax measure and uh, proposing the initiative. The other thing it does is that your fees and charges for services would be held through a higher uh, threshold, but it's not defined yet. So we already have to, um, we already hold ourselves to a standard where we can't um, recuperate more than we charge, but this would have an, another level of undefined reasonableness, a different standard. And then also what is kind of undefined and, and little fuzzy is fines and penalties and other violations would may be subject to voter approval. So those are like fireworks fines and other um, fines that the city may impose according to their ordinances. So um, not, not a good thing for city government. Hmm. What would, uh, what's the motivation for this to? Uh, great question. So on the right there, the initiative is being proposed by uh, a group of wealthy California corporations. A lot of it has to do with development and not having to pay taxes um, and possibly annexations that are not subject to current taxes and having different initiatives. Yeah, um, that's a good point. The initiative itself uh, is going through the validation signature process right now. It, it does require a little over 997,000 signatures for the entire state of California, and they're due by June 30th, both uh, and verified by June 30th of 2022. On the left there, you'll see some similar initiatives that have already passed and that have really crippled um, how cities are able to uh, either raise taxes or how they're allocated taxes. Um, so you'll see those incrementally coming through us uh, since Proposition 13 in 1978, um, which really put a cap on property tax increases year over year. And then the rest have to do with, now we have to have ordinances, now we have to have resolutions, Understood. now we have to have public hearings, um, now we have to have special ballot language, we have a number of set counted words. And, and so it's on and on and on additional requirements in order for cities to be able to, be able to have initiatives. Right. And so this initiative, um, if it gets the required votes, it would be on the ballot in November. Mm -hmm. Um, and proposed to the voters and would add just another layer yeah. on top of all these other initiatives that you see here on the screen um, Which, for the I mean, city. I, I understand it. I mean, it's great for, the, for, for democracy, for the public, but at the same time, it stifles our ability as a city to do things and be, you know, I mean, a little majority, bit more yeah. progressive. Uh-huh. Yeah, majority so, and majority. Uh-huh. And so, 
you know, that doesn't require two thirds majority. You know what I mean? It's like, but that's what they're proposing. So, so uh, real quick, annexation means that we would still have to provide city services, but they wouldn't have to pay. They, so we'd provide all the services we provide to the rest of the city, but we can't tax them like we do the rest of the city. Right. Right? It would need to wow. go before the voting vote. public. Well, and it would never pass. It'd be well, two thirds uh -huh, voting. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. it's the last it yeah. That was the last time we've seen that happen. Uh -huh. It would not so. pass. So. You know? Yeah. Anyway. And then right. we then there's then we have two different citizenship groups, right? Being, being, uh, being in opposition, in, in mm -hmm. opposition, yeah. or the, or there'll be a, there'll uh -huh. be issues with yeah. that because they're what treated if, differently. What if it's a large group that's annexed and they're a bunch right. of, you know what I mean? They're yep. like we don't. You know. <laughs> that's great. Anyway, I'll I'll vote to uh, I'll make the motion to to uh, adopt the resolution. Um, okay. Go close the initiative. Okay. I'll second. And I have a second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion carries, okay. All right, all right so item 7D, discussion and potential action to receive and file, hold on, let me get this open. Receive and file standard and poor ratings direct report dated March the 7th, 2022, presented by Carla Romero. Okay, I've got to give you some great news okay. <laughs> following Good. that, right? Yes. Um, so this is a north noteworthy financial accomplishment for the city. Uh, the process started back in 2020, long before I was here, um, when the city started to really adopt budgetary, updated budgetary and operational changes um, in order to right-size the budget. So... Um, Sorry, I'm on okay. So, who was here in 2020 in finance? That would be our current city manager, Mr. <laughs> Tyler Salcido. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I made sure she got this up. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> He's like, if you could just slip in 2020. <laughs> 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 Okay. So um, what Standards & Poor's does is kind of like your credit rating, your personal credit rating, but they rate cities in order to determine your credit worthiness. And the city does have a pension obligation bond that is paid by our general fund. And so the focus of this particular report is on the general fund and its ability to pay its pension obligation bond and, other city, and provide other city services. Back in uh, September 1st of 2020, Standards & Poor's Standard & Poor's issued a negative outlook for the city. And so it was time for us to really make some difficult decisions and right size um, the budget and our reserves and, uh, and, and make that into a stable outlook. So um, we've had ongoing communication since I've been here. I think Standard & Poor's in the last year has reached out about every two to three months to request an update from the city. Mm -hmm. And in January, they requested a full analysis where I had to give them a couple of pages of information and lots of reports, references to council meetings, public presentations. Uh, they reviewed all of that, and they issued an amended report um, on March the 7th with a stable outlook for the city. And um, what stable means is that we're able, they, in their determination, we are able to meet our ongoing um, both pension obligations and provide service levels that are adequate for the city. And so that, that is a big accomplishment and um, certainly took a lot of, of your decisiveness and, um, and really grit from the city, our, our staff members, to be able to, to get to that point. And so I'd like to go over a few of the things that they commended us on and why, oops, why they changed that rating. Um, so what they did is they reviewed all of these things on the left-hand side here, our general government framework, how we operate, our communication internally, and then also even amongst you. Uh, so they look at our council meetings and they wanna know uh, how cohesive is the council, or do they know what they're talking about, that kind of thing. Our economy, both locally and globally. <laughs> Uh, management of the city, who's in charge, how many years of service, um, yeah, you no. know, um, <laughs> how much knowledge do we have, uh, our budgetary flexibility, meaning are we able to meet our ongoing obligations, do we have a budget surplus versus a deficit, uh, the performance of that budget, the liquidity um, or reserves of the city, are we able to pivot and change if there happens to be um, a negative occurrence, and then also our debt and other liabilities. One of the big questions they kept asking is, are you going to go into additional debt? And I kept saying, no, we don't have any plans to go into additional debt. And so that was one of the um, biggest things that they kept questioning. Mm -hmm. So on the right are just some key highlights um, that they uh, pinpointed. The document has a couple of others but they really appreciated that the general fund reserves is back to an adequate level or what they consider an adequate level with the uh, flexibility to pivot if we need to. 
um, that we have average environment. We do have, they noted that we have uh, above average environmental risk with our earthquakes, drought, and extreme heat. And so that's why those reserves levels are so important to them. They uh, recognize that we are taking a proactive management of cybersecurity, and you have a couple of items on the agenda tonight to further shout out to Armando uh, show there that. in the back. Shout you know, out that's out good. Good job. Yes, the city does not project uh, returning to a deficit budget, and so we've uh, communicated that to them as well. Uh, they also noted that the utility user tax extended with no sunset is a very big win for the city, and then also that we are working on adding and strengthening our policies and practices internally, including having quarterly budget reports, um, the 10-year financial projections. I gave that to them right as soon as those were approved and they, they incorporated that into the report. And also the fact that we have implemented and are projecting to continue to maintain the five-year capital improvement plan. And so what they're seeing is long-term planning, long-term um, accountability of the city's funds, and they really like that. And so that's what allowed them to change that to a stable outlook for the city. And it, it really is commendable. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Nava, you mentioned a uh, shout out to uh, IT, but it really is all of the departments, right? Um, the various practices that everybody has continued to implement, internal controls and the monitoring of our budget um, has, has really allowed us to get to this point. Certainly. No, it really is. I mean, it is, mm -hmm. it is just the change in our leadership and the direction that the city's taking it. And quite honestly, I'll give credit to council too. Absolutely. I mean, that is absolutely true. I, I generally don't say that, but I will. You know, and so um, it's just a change in the way we are doing business. I think it's just better. You know, you're part of that team, you're part mm -hmm. of that team, and so is everyone in here. So mm -hmm. um, it's just a, it's a good, solid team that's moving forward. So thank you for recognizing the rest of the staff because I think they're doing a great job. So one of the things that they always want to caution, right, um, we want to celebrate our wins, but um, they always want to tell us how we can raise it um, further or raise our rating. We have an A minus rating. The rating didn't change, but the stability or the outlook did. And so they gave us some options on if we want to raise it and raise the, the credit rating above an A minus, then we should maintain adequate reserve uh, levels. And then they're also going to be monitoring our revenue growth, specifically our sales tax uh, revenue growth, because um, just economic development, um, property tax revenues, those kinds of things, uh, to see the prosperity of the city. On the flip side, if uh, the city goes into you, having deficit budgets and using reserves to balance the budget, then the rating would be lowered back to a negative outlook. Mm. Okay. So I'm happy to answer um, any questions. Um, any questions you might from have. the council members? Mr. Mayor, just, I think this, this really um, is, is a great continuation. First off, fantastic um, <clears throat> news to, to achieve this. Um, you know, it, it sounds like it wasn't necessarily expected, but it, it's been the, the work and the reporting and, in, in keeping in that close uh, contact with the uh, standard and pours. But um, beyond that, I think our last meeting, um, we had a little peek at what maybe the longer term future looks like. So <clears throat> I think all these things kind of coming together sounds like they're gonna kind of help shape our, our next, not only maybe budget season, but more importantly, maybe our longer term strategic look. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that might come up here, you know, a little bit later on what we're doing around that. But I, this is very helpful because this, this really kind of sets some further expectations of maybe what we can aim for, so. Absolutely. How does a an improved rating affect our bottom line? Oh, that's a great question. So, interest rate. um, mm -hmm. interest rate? right, interest rates for mm -hmm. refinancing, for bond mm -hmm. issuances. Um, also, developers take a look at our credit rating to figure out how stable the city is, Risk. what kind of services yeah. are you able to provide if we bring our business or our residences um, here to the city. Um, it really is a reflection of the operations of the city. So a lot of times, this is a much easier and digestible report than our financial statements. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of people look at this as an additional confirmation of what the financial statements of the city reflect. Does an improved outlook change our credit rating or our interest rates? Yes. So it's a combination of the outlook plus the actual rating itself. So the rating itself was not changed. If they see a continued progression, they indicated that they would keep monitoring the city about every six months to a year. And we could even reach out and say we'd like to um, have an additional analysis. Yeah. Um, and then they would be able to change that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And our current rating is? An A-. A-. Yeah. Good work, Carl. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 
Started with Tyler. And Tyler, sorry. Well, uh, I will say to Mayor Pro Tem's point is, is it starts with you guys making some that weren't real popular or, or easy decisions back yeah. a couple budget yeah. cycles ago, and, and that's, that's where it starts. So. And I don't mean that to take a credit for, but it's just quite honestly, and I'll, 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 I'll freely admit this, it takes everybody, <laughs> it really does, to work together to make it happen. So I'm proud to be part of that team. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I think so. we need a motion. It's just to receive and file oh, okay. to formally um, to accept the report. Receive and file the standard I'll report. Second that. And I have a second from Luke. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Carries. Okay. One okay. more, Armando. Mm -hmm. Okay, item 7E, discussion and potential action to approve the proposed 2022-23 budget process and public meeting schedule presented by Tyler Salcedo, city manager. Uh, Armando, can you pull up uh, uh, my uh, PowerPoint, please? <laughs> 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 Mondo, <laughs> 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 no, not Carla's mine. <laughs> I think that, well, no, I think he's right. I, mean, I think that we're saving uh, here uh, resources, we're saving money. Uh, uh, Mayor, I'll, I'll hand it over to our finance director to That's handle awesome. this. Thank you. <laughs> oh, oh Tyler, you surprise me all the time. <laughs> he had to get his joke in right there. You know what I mean? That was good. good. It started back in 2020. Well, back up, so, you know? <laughs> in the thing with the schedules and stuff, mm -hmm. so yeah. there it is. Yeah, okay. so we Good. have already um, done the May, uh, sorry, the March 1st 10-year financial projections that really started off um, next year's budget process. We are proposing to have five additional uh, public meetings regarding next year's budget that should be adopted by June 21st of 2022. Um, <laughs> We will continue to have a dedicated budget website page similar to we did last year to have one cohesive or one inclusive landing page with all of these uh, public meetings, uh, both the, the documents and then also a link to the, um, the video uh, so that people can easily access that. Uh, of course, they're encouraged to attend public meetings for uh, comment and input or also reach out directly to the finance department um, to provide any of those um, that, that input or um, comments that they might have. Okay. Uh, public meetings are always available online uh, during and after. And of course, they're held here in the council chambers normally at 6 p.m. And so we're requesting for you to approve the uh, proposed budget timeline. It'll be very similar to last year. Uh, I am proposing to have a couple of additional enhancements to the budget document itself. But again, we want it to be pretty cohesive. So just some minor additional finishing touches like uh, accomplishments and goals uh, for our departments, maybe the personnel page might change and be enhanced a little bit. But overall, the document will look very similar to last year. Okay. Um, was there, I just had a question. Tyler had indicated that he might need to change one of these meetings, or was there something? No, that, um, I, I think Mr. Uh, Council Member Wharton will discuss a potential workshop under his uh, report. Outside okay. of this. Yeah. Under his, oh, this okay. Is, this is beyond, this is separate. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good. It's okay. it's uh, during proposed meetings, so right. I mean I'm in. I'll make a motion to approve it. You'll we make need a to, motion yeah. to approve the schedule. No, I'll okay. second that. And I have a second over here. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Right. Item seven F: Discussion and potential action to award a one-year cybersecurity services contract to the nth generation. Nth is that how you is that how you say that? Nth generation to manage, detect, and respond to cyber threats for a, for a, a not to exceed amount of $49,156.50 and authorize the city manager to execute the agreement presented by Armando Garibay, Information Systems Manager. Armando. Good evening, Council. Mayor. Um, earlier in Carla's slide, there was mention about uh, cybersecurity. So that is what some of these items here are um, bringing to you are, are regarding. Um, you guys actually, under your leadership a couple of years ago, you guys actually started cybersecurity while issuing a password policy. I kind of took the baton and started that educational piece with our staff, but this is the next step forward. And with, with, as, as you guys are aware, you guys have heard of cybersecurity issues out there and the threats and how it's forced 
organizations to augment their security posture. And um, by doing that, um, there's few bottlenecks, right? There is staffing, strategic product uh, selection. And what that means is getting a product that's gonna not only fit with us, but also not interfere with production. But the biggest pain point is monitoring 24 seven, right? So IT department takes pride in being able to respond quickly to not only incidents, but also our staff for ticketing. <clears throat> what happens at 2 a.m. when there's an attack, right? It, it, it's probably gonna have to wait. Um, interesting enough, uh, just yesterday at, at 5.30 p.m., we, we got attacked. And um, you know, I was driving home and I saw, I saw that uh, attack. Let's go. Oh, it's over here. I'm gonna... oh. Oh, I thought the thing was falling over. It was, it was, like... <laughs> yeah. it was, it was attack. It was an attack. Something else was attacked. And uh, luckily enough, we, we have safeguards, right, to, to uh, help us. Oh, it's kind of hard to see, but the, the time is there, 5.30. This was yesterday, right, by a friendly overseas uh, A friendly nation. overseas nation. Yeah. Anyhow, um, it was about 8,000 different tries at that time, right, a critical, right? And we were able to, get from home, I, I mitigated it. But what, what happens if that would happen when no one's manning uh -huh. the ship, right? So that's what this... That's where Arctic Wolf comes in to play. They are, you know, IT department's recommending them um, to augment the, the cybersecurity efforts that we have. Their platform, their cloud-based managed detection response, MDR. And what that is, is there's somebody watching our network 24 seven. If there's an issue, they can mitigate that threat. They neutralize it. Now, I wanna be clear that it's not a boot on the ground they will stop the threat and give us a call and say, hey, there's an issue, go down. We stopped it, but there's a problem. So that in itself lets your IT department sleep better at night and I hope it does for you guys too. Um, and how, how do they do that? So they strategically put sensors all over our network, right? Wastewater department, water treatment department, and some of our other key areas. Um, it's something that we just don't have the manpower to do right now. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for those reasons is why I am uh, recommending that we move forward with this contract. That is a 12-month contract at $49,156.50. Um, alternatively, we're able to purchase all of these products ourselves and install it in-house. But again, we do not have the manpower and it comes at a higher rate mm -hmm. to, to do it ourselves. Okay. Yeah, can you imagine? I mean, just like the water treatment facilities, wastewater treatment, um, police departments, fire departments, all those sorts of systems that are in place, and not to, including finance and everybody else. Yeah, you and, know, and so. again, you know, we are, like you guys said a lot of times, we're a 24-hour yeah. full-service um, city. There are people using equipment here 24 yes. hours a day. Yes. So for those reasons, um, I'm asking for you guys to approve this. Okay. Any, any questions? Uh, this is part of the budget, so you already have this money set aside in your budget. Yes, we are. This will this will overlap two fiscal years, um, but we do have budget for it, and we're not asking for additional funding from the general fund for this. Okay. And, and uh, one thing that um, I want to emphasize is our uh, JPIA, our our insurance, is without these uh, measures that Amondo's been working on putting in place, they will not insure us. So, I mean, on, on cybersecurity, and, and I know Armando and, and uh, Shirley met today with JPIA on, a, on a, that process of getting all this, so we're checking the boxes to show them that we're, we're doing all that we can, yeah. so. Right, okay. that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, you remember the threat at the county a couple years oh. back, and I think they, they paid a fraction of r the real cost, you yeah. know, and so yeah. that's, that's interesting. And I think in the real world today with the Ukraine and the Russians and, and I don't know where the France thing came from, but, but I think we, we have to be aware that France. they're they're attempting to enter our systems and mess things up or do whatever they want. And so we need to have these things in place, I think, I think especially in, in things that are happening around the world today. Yeah, I'll, I'll even go as far as saying there is no silver bullet, end-all, catch-all, yeah. you, know, yeah. you know, to absolute, you know, 
credit to Armando is 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 really a, a, a one man show. Yeah. You know, we need to get that support. Yeah. And uh, um, cloud based support, I see it in the corporate world. Yeah. And the threat environment right now is as high as it's high. been. Yeah. You know, um, in know, a long time. So. It's hard enough for my small business. I mean, we have what I don't know seven machines, and it's yeah. hard enough to manage that. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine like what he's having to do? You yeah. know, so it okay. just it's. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve. All right. I'll second it. All right, I have a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion, questions? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, approved. Okay, 7G, just stay there right there. Discussion and potential action to approve a 120,831.61 contract with AMS net for firewall replacements and cybersecurity upgrades at various city facilities and authorize the city manager to execute the agreement presented by Armando. Thank you. This is a, uh, you guys are aware, fire, firewalls are our first line of defense from external threats. So it's very cr critical and crucial that we keep these things up to date. They're just like computers, they have an age limit. Our main firewall is six years old and we have some in other departments that are even older. And the key thing is that the, some of these are old enough where the manufacturer says, hey, Thank you for being a great customer, but we can no longer support these anymore. We cannot put any more firmware or latest definitions on this. Leaves a gap for us. Um, so that that is why um, we are asking, the IT department is recommending a replacement of these. These will be located in the wastewater treatment, the water plant treatment, fire station one, and the main data center for the city. Um, this will include a five-year maintenance agreement and subscription for all of these. Um, and uh, these the these costs will be covered under the American Rescue Plan Act ARPA funding. Okay. So it, it will not have any fiscal impact in our budget. Okay. All right. Any questions? Yes. Any questions? For the, the 120 council? that's a five year contract, or it's 120 per year. It is so. the total for the okay. the five years. Yes. Okay. So that's over five years. Okay. Okay. I'll entertain a motion if there's no other question. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second, second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Approved. Thank you. Thank you, Armando. Thank you, Armando. Good job, Armando. Okay. Item 7H. Discussion and potential action to adopt a resolution of the City Council of the City of Brawley, California, adopting the City of Brawley 2022 COVID-19 Supplemental Paid Sick Leave Policy, SPDL, presented by Shirley Benias, Personnel and Risk Manager. Shirley? Honorable Mayor, Council Member Shirley Benias. Um, it's SPSL, sorry for the typo on the agenda. Uh, this is a state mandated program similar to the 2021 version, just slightly different, little different qualifications. There's one bucket of money hours of 40 hours for one set of reasons, and then there's 40 hours for another set. Okay. Like I said, Mayor, it's a state man mandated unfunded, <laughs> and funny. it's retro to January 1st, 2022. Really nice. So as soon as council approves this, it will be released to staff, and there is a form included for them to request their leave banks to be reinstated. Okay. Do we expect much of a cost in this, or? Yes. Uh, okay. There we had quite a few cases of COVID in January, February, um, okay. including myself. So. Uh, we were hit pretty hard during the month of January. Okay. All right. Make a motion to approve the item, Mr. Okay. Mayor. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a second. Any further discussion? Any questions for Shirley? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Shirley. <coughs> okay, 7I. Discussion and potential action to award a contract to AA Electric for electrical panel repairs at Gonzales Park, not to exceed 21,655.59. Approve the associated budget adjustments, totaling 25,155.59, and authorize the city manager to coordinate the repairs presented by Rachel Fonseca, Parks and Recreation Manager. Rachel. 
Good evening, members of the council. Rachel Fonseca, Parks and Recreation Manager. The electrical panel at Abe Gonzalez Park is no longer working properly and is unsafe for staff to operate. Since the panel is not working, Brawley Little League and other park users cannot use the field for practice. And staff obtained three estimates to repair the electrical panel. The first estimate from AA Electric came in at 21655 the second estimate from Red One Electric came in at 23640 and a third request for an estimate from Omega was unmet due to the contractor being occupied with the project. There is also a separate $3,500 IID disconnect and reconnect fee, and that would be added to the lowest estimate, bringing it to the $25,155. <coughs> and staff is requesting permission to award the contract to AA Electric and the budget adjustment. The funds would be drawn from the surplus. Any questions? Um, Mr. City Manager, would you like to comment on that with respect to the, uh, the use of funds? Yes. Um, well, first of all, this is a very important park, and it's Little League season, and uh, without it, uh, we're going to be tight on space. We're on tight on space as it we're is. In trouble. Uh, the Little League has offered up uh, potentially uh, to help with the cost, uh, approximately 2000 somewhere around there. Uh, but I think that uh, it's imperative that we get this done for the uh, uh, youth of Brawley with or without any potential other income coming in. Um, it, is not, it is an unbudgeted item, but w again, with uh, prior presentations uh, and, and past councils, uh, there was some surplus that we are anticipating and that what would be used. Okay. With it being unsafe, I think it's got to be done. I mean, yeah. we don't want it out there. If someone was to get involved with it, they could get injured, and then the then the liability become much greater. So it's I think we have to accounts. pay for it. No, it's a, a surplus in the general fund uh, reserve. Sorry, for the reserve. Yeah. Okay. That'll drop the reserve down to sixty-nine thousand eight hundred one dollars. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it goes fast. Huh? Yeah, it goes yeah. quick, hey, but things, <laughs> things, things happen. This is why it's important to, yep. we to maintain a reserve. reserve. Yes, yep. that's yep. right. Uh, do we have a motion? A motion to approve item 79. Okay. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, approved. Okay. Thank you. Uh, another one. Item 7J, discussion and potential action to accept a $5,000 donation for Beachy Field Snack Bar Roof Repairs and approve associated budget adjustments presented by Rachel Fonseca, Parks and Recreation Manager. Rachel. Good evening, members of the council. Rachel Fonseca, Parks and Recreation Manager. So the Parks and Rec Department received a $5,000 donation from an anonymous donor, and staff would like to use the donation towards repairing the Beachy Field Snack Bar Roof, as you can see from the picture, it is in dire need of repair, oh, yeah. and staff obtained three estimates, and the lowest is $6,925 from Barajas Roofing, and the total cost of the repairs would be $6,925, and $5,000 would be from the donation, and $1,925 would be from the general fund. Hmm. Okay. Again, this is a, a, a very used field and snack bar storage area. Uh, it's been leaking like like a sieve for a long time. Uh, we it also is a high uh, uh, vandalized area, uh, so there's repairs are badly needed, and and uh, as the previous item again, it would come out of the reserves for the balance would come out of the reserves uh, from the general fund. Can make a motion to approve the item. I have a, a motion. I have a second. Uh, any other discussion? Any other questions? If not, just I'll, a statement, Mr. Ahead. Mayor. Just I uh, would like to thank the uh, anonymous donor of their watching. Oh, thank yes. you very much for your contribution to the city. Yes, thank Second you. Second, that as well. Sure. Yes. It should be noted that was unsolicited, right. as they all are. Yeah, just, most of all. Yeah, he, he, fantastic. The, the, the person uh, approached Rachel about. We're, we're very thankful for thank, that. So. Yeah, thank them. Thank please. them. I will. Us. May okay. I add one more thing? Hold on. Uh, the uh, executive staff. Oh. You I have to have a vote. Okay, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Approved. Go okay. ahead. The executive staff is working on creating a donation policy for the city to help make the acceptance of donations and other items easier, and the policy will be brought back to council at a later date. Sounds good. Thank Perfect. you very much. Thank you. Thank okay. You. City council member reports. I'll start with um, Mr. Hamby. 
I don't have a whole lot to report, Mr. Mayor. I um, haven't really been to any events, but um, I have been in contact with some city staff and some um, city residents about uh, different issues, some some concerns and some uh, some positive comments. And um, I'm just I just would like to reiterate how grateful I am for the leadership that we have in place. Um, some comments were made tonight as far as our, our improved uh, outlook. And I'm, I also would like to, uh, to notice and applaud the city council as a whole for some of the decisions that we made in, in just bringing on the leadership that we have today um, because I think that's where it started, um, making the right decisions for leadership. And it wasn't easy. None of those decisions were easy. And there was pushback on, on individuals, but I think uh, we miraculously set ourselves up for uh, some good years ahead of us. And so I'm very thankful for, for Tyler, our city manager, and, and the groundwork that he laid in finance when he was there. Grateful for Carla Romero in, in finance, um, Rachel in, in Parks and Rec, and, and Chief Duran uh, making some changes in the police department that are um, improving morale, improving the way um, the community sees the police department, and, and, and thankful also for the fact that, by and large, our community is very supportive of our, of our police and fire departments. So um, it's just um, this, has been a, this has been a nice meeting, um, and it's been a decent run of, of a couple of years that I think are just setting the trajectory for for some more good years ahead of us. Yep. So that's all I have. Mm. Okay. Mr. Wharton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you for those comments too, um, Council Member Hamby. I, and just to echo, I did get some, um, some direct input again on the neighbors program. So Chief, I just wanted to let you know that and I'm sure all of us are getting, you know, that, that, that type of input and, um, Friends tell friends, neighbors tell neighbors, um, and um, even getting inquiries, hey, how do I get the app or what do I do, you know, that type of thing. So pretty exciting. Um, looking forward to hearing what the, I don't know if you, you know, if, if there's analytics to track on that, on how many subscribers or whatever, you know, uh, uh, app users we may have, but it'd be interesting. Um, outside of that also, uh, a, a different citizen noted um, some of the, um, work that's been done up and down Main Street. I think some of the issues that we've had um, there, you know, some of it being blight, some of it being, you know, um, things that um, typically in the past that we thought would maybe be beyond our control. But I think, um, again, and I know, um, Chief, it's not just uh, PD, it's other stuff. This has been kind of a team approach. It's something that's discussed, I think, in, in, in our um, meetings uh, quite a bit. And um, so it's just the fact that all the departments are on board, whatever we have to do to address even some of the smallest issues, um, maybe a little bit of the broken window concept theory, you know, that's been around for many years. But um, outside of that, um, I did uh, um, have the opportunity to meet um, with our city manager and our city finance director um, as kind of charged, I think, from our last meeting to discuss what a strategic uh, meeting or outlook or workshop would look like. Um, I thought it was a great discussion, some great ideas, certainly stuff that I, you know, even I wasn't thinking of from some of my past experience. So I think together what, what came out of that was um, not only some suggestion, but even some modeling from some other agencies that do engage in this as well. Um, and uh, so, Carla, thank you for that. And I think um, maybe I'll just leave it to you, Tyler, if you just want to mention something that I think you even attended at that um, oh, yes. invite. Yeah, um, Car uh, Carla and I, uh, uh, attended La Quinta uh, community workshop that they have, they have annually, and, and, and Carla was in her own st old stomping grounds. That they did thank me for <coughs> taking her away. They were tired of her. Oh, <laughs> but, they were tired. But, uh, they no, were tired. it was a great it was great wow. uh, learning experience for me. Uh, it was a great community engagement. The staff uh, we, we had uh, it was very educational for me, especially. I know Carla had been through those before. And we would like to model something uh, like that yep. for you guys. Uh, I would make the one comment when I was talking to the council members and staff and, and even some of the community members, because there was a lot of round table stuff going on. Uh, you know, they had uh, city of Brawley, huh? How, how, what's the population? Oh, about 26,000 and change. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. How many employees you got? We tell them. And, and I tell them. And then they were like, 
Well, what do you do? All the things we provided, police, fire, senior center, library, parks and recs, this and that. And to a man, to a person, they all said, how do you afford all that for your size of a city? Yeah. That's a good question. It's a so, good question. Uh, but uh, anyway, it was, it was great. And we hope that maybe we can get some uh, tentative date to set that up. But uh, we're anticipating maybe a Saturday community workshop engaging the public and to uh, show, you know, of course, all the wins that we're doing as, as a city yep. and, and, uh, and some of our uh, challenges and, and, uh, and looking for some public input. And it, it, just to finalize that, and then I'll hand it over to you, Mr. Mr. Mayor. So I think what we're maybe, um, there's definitely some prep time, and this could fall in line with uh, budget season as we saw that, um, you know, that calendar and the kind of the cadence there. Um, so maybe something, it's going to be really important we all can attend, obviously. So um, I think we're looking at maybe potentially early June. I don't know if there's a date there that you want to put out June 4th or uh, something. That would uh, be, uh, that would be uh, staff's recommendation or request would be June 4th. That one, that gives us some time to prep and do things properly. We're mostly through the regular budget season. Uh, all that work's done. And that gives us enough time to uh, get everybody's calendar lined up. So what, what day, I'm sorry? June 4th. That's a Saturday? Saturday. Yeah. Check out the graduations for the schools, though. We Are they on Saturday? But that's, a, that. that's a fourth to Saturday. I don't think they're on a Saturday, yeah. but, but yeah. you could check. Yeah. I say just do it. Yeah. And uh, so it, we're, we're anticipating what we think, what we envision, I should say, <clears throat> is from 9 to 12 at mm -hmm. either the Lion Center or potentially Del Rio, where, you know, we can uh, have a lot of people in the room, some round tables and, and presentations and things of that nature. Yep. Um, whiteboard, yeah. PowerPoint tools, whatever PowerPoint, we need to do to collect. Uh, yeah. You saw and the skills we had right, there yes. on the PowerPoint. But, uh, um, will, yes. you, will you be making yes. this slide? <laughs> yes, all of them. <laughs> yes. Uh, I actually enjoyed that one. I mean, it was easy to read. So it's like, you know, <laughs> but that's how you negotiate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and uh, they, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, and, you know. Yeah. Kind of similar style, I think, Carla, we have. You know, we don't want to recreate the whole new wheel, but, and it, and it was a lot of good, it was good, a lot of good community engagement. And that's my report out, but Mr. Mayor and Council, I, I would just defer back to Council if that date works. Maybe um, our city manager can circulate that with um, maybe more details as they come together, um, but that's kind of where we landed. I think it's we'll since, since it is a Saturday, I think it's the, the more, uh, the sooner we announce it, the better for everyone. Yep. You know, yeah. that way they can arrange their plans because obviously. Sure. Yep. I'm, I'm open to it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Not sure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, so uh, this past weekend uh, I visited Mexico City, uh, continue my advocacy with uh, veterans, especially those that have been deported. I met up with the gentleman, another Marine. It's funny because I walk up and he's a sergeant. <laughs> I'm like, it's just the weirdest thing. I hadn't heard that in such a long time. But I was supposed to go to El Salvador. Uh, the trip was canceled uh, due to several issues. Um, uh, anyways, I forgot. I'm sorry I didn't bring your cigars, Mr. Mayor. Apologize. Um, <laughs> I think uh, at this time, <laughs> I got in trouble. Um, right now, when we brought up yes, a couple of these uh, uh uh, comments here, uh, projects, small projects. I think it'd be a, a nice time to revisit uh, the Brawley Improvement uh, Committee that I wanted to create when I first got started here on council. And somehow we put it on the back burner uh, with your permission, Mr. Mayor. I know I had uh, uh, Council Member Hamby's permission, but we didn't follow through. With your permission, I'd like to start that up again in discussions with our city manager and our city attorney. I think that, that those are pro good projects for our community members to take on, and uh, the city would obviously provide some of the resources, but it would save the city a ton of money, and again, our, com our folks in our community would have the opportunity to come out and help out with those items. So I would love to, if it's okay with you, uh, restart that, that uh, conversation. Uh, also like to thank our, our chief of police. I think uh, we haven't uh, talked much, but I know that you're paying attention. So I've been watching the patrols around before lunch and after school. Uh, obviously, that's an area of concern. I got, you know, a kid in high school, a kid in junior high. And just today, I mean, right in front of our officers, <laughs> the things that people do as I was driving around this afternoon, I was like, you know, imagine what happens when they're not around. So thank you for that. You're, I do appreciate everything that you're doing. And we continue to uh, advertise that uh, neighbor's app. Everywhere I go, I show somebody. So that's pretty cool, actually. Um, 
And and lastly, thank you for the news, Carla, earlier, uh, Mr. Salcido. Um, it is awesome. I, I mean, I sit here and I'm always very proud to be part, very proud of being an elected official for the city. I'm very proud to be part of this team. I think, uh, if, as you guys remember, when I was campaigning to be up here, I promised that I that I wanted to be an asset and not, not disrupt things, not just be a pain in the butt for the sake of it, right? And we see that happening in other places. And so I really, really appreciate, uh, and I'm very proud to be part of this council and part of this city and that standard and poor report. I mean, it, it, it's not, I mean, it's a big deal. It's a big deal and I'm very proud today. I was just like, I hadn't been that proud since I was here. So thank you so much for all that. And thank you guys, appreciate the hard work. That's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank, thank everyone here for paying attention and listening and participating. I appreciate staff and the public as well. I know that there's a lot more engagement now because our, our meetings are broadcast, so that's that's important. Um, and, you know, I just feel good about our community overall. I think there's a lot of improvement. Business is developing. You know, we're seeing, um, you know, the area across the street from Walmart being developed, and that's, you know, it's just added improvement. Homes are going up. You know, everybody's uh, working hard, so it's I'm proud to be part of this team as well. I do want to uh, recognize Comité Cívico del Valle Right before I attended this meeting, I was there, and it was really a, uh, an event that was um, attended by some of the top-level people from throughout the state of California. And it was an electric vehicle charging um, ribbon cutting. And so uh, Comité Civico has put this program together through some grant funding, and uh, they actually have an electric vehicle charging station right in front of their office now. Hmm. And so you can actually go swipe a credit card, charge your vehicle. And so it's just, they plan on putting 40 additional units throughout the area, and it's just a, really a wave of the future that's coming here and the technology that's being um, developed here in Imperial County with the, with the extraction of lithium. So, um, and, you know, people from the industry are there, top, elect, uh, top officials from the state of California were there, our representatives from the state uh, assembly and the state senate were there as well. And so it's just, it's a great showcase of our efforts here within our city you know but i'll tell you they made mention of the fact that um that is the most well attended uh, uh ribbon cutting for a charging station that they've seen right <laughs> and and you know little do they know that people in brawley like to have a good time and they go out and they're when there's some food and some some drinks available they're going to go out and participate so i think that's <laughs> that's important to recognize but in all seriousness it also goes to show that the efforts that are made locally you know uh luis Olmedo, he has his critics and he has some people that are they're big fans i i consider him a friend i always have and, um, you know, we don't always see eye to eye, but I can tell you what, he has his pulse on the, the state agencies and he does have their attention. And he has a large staff here that he's developed and uh, that's one nonprofit that's grown over the course of time. And I can be a critic or not, I, I have to recognize when things are being done and being done well. So I'll give him that credit and uh, I have, he has my respect as well, but I can tell you, you know, not everybody is able to do that. A lot of people are a lot of talk and they don't do it. He's doing it and he's being recognized at a state level and he's bringing resources from throughout the state out here too. And recognition, which is really important to our community and our, and our valley. But I'm especially proud of the fact that it happened here in Brawley. So yeah. anyway, uh, that's my two cents. I want to thank staff and everybody else. And uh, yeah, let's uh, enjoy the last few days of good weather. <laughs> Yeah. Right. I think they're okay. gone. Yeah. Well, it's still all right. You know what I mean. Yeah. So it's forty-seven. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, I apologize. I meant to to ask when I was giving my report. Uh, this lighted up blue request. Uh, maybe we can do something about that, like at the kiosk or something. Put in a blue light bulb for the month of April. We can definitely. Or somewhere else. I don't know if PD is planning on doing something. Yes, she actually requested that, so we're going to work on okay, it. Okay, great, good. I think we've actually done that in the past. Yeah, so I think that would be cool. I think we can continue awesome. that, whatever we can do at that point in time. Okay. I, I do want to just read something, and maybe I shouldn't, but I'm going to, okay? I just received it. Okay. It's it's a message to me from uh, Mario Renteria, and it's regarding our old water tower. Um, he knows a park, and they may be able to get some funding for us. They need information like tonight, so... We'll work on it. We'll see what happens. Yeah, uh, so, we're aware. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've been working behind the scenes on yeah. that. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I need that information tonight at ASAP, please. So there you go. So you have yeah. your work cut out for you. Okay. 
All right. Um, my report kind of piggybacks a little bit. I was invited to give the welcome to Brawley to this event, a uh, well-attended event by a lot of different people from Calexico, from, from the Valley, and also from the state. They had the Secretary of the California Natural Resources Agency. They had the California Secretary of Labor, I believe, was there. Uh, they had um, a California Energy Commissioner was there, um, the Board Chair of the California Air Resources Board, and General Motors Western Regional Director was there because they were instrumental. General GM or General Motors was instrumental in getting them some of the grant money in order to do the, the EV charging station. And some of the local uh, politician representatives were there also, and county supervisors, et cetera. So it was a very big event, looked like a nice event. I think everybody wanted to get over there, and it was nice for Brawley to have everybody over here, especially after COVID, okay? So that, that was that. Uh, winter school, I did a Zoom uh, reading to the children for Read Across America. And at Hidalgo, I did an actual on-site reading. And I owe an apology to Council Member Ramon because I allowed some people to uh, trick him into reading, to picking the book that he had to read to the students at Hidalgo. He had to read the Lorax. <laughs> by Di and what it, if you've never read the Lorax, it's like 50 pages, oh my and goodness. it's a lot of it's it's a whole. But I read the Cat in the Hat, you know, 15 pages, one sentence on each page, you know, not too much. We, we tricked Ramon, and and it wasn't all me. It wasn't all me. I don't take full credit. I was only like a third. I was only like a third to blame for it, you know. Gilly Rebelar and Stella, that represents our co our, our congressperson our at the state, member. our assembly member. Um, they were responsible also, and they they actually carried it forward and, and had Ramon read this book. And we feel very good that it only took him an hour, and that the kids had to help him. But other than that, everything else was all right, you know. But if you ever seen the book, The Lore, actually, you need to look at that because oh, I would not pick that as my book to read to the students at school. I told so, you, I, Mr. Mayor, I I did. I asked uh, what what book, and I asked if The Shining would be a good children's book and they were no you know? but but I do recommend another book and that's the the real story about the big bad wolf and the three little pigs that told from the big bad wolf's perspective <laughs> there you go <laughs> and it and it reads just like someone that had done that would would talk about it you know he was innocent of all charges right. all, most of that was just found those pigs you know the 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 the, the, the pigs Made him do it, you know. That they they, they 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 set him up, you know. All of that. Type I'll have of to thing. read that. So it's a yeah. really good book. You should you should look at that. That's I did so not funny. read that. I gave the kids a choice. They chose the cat in the hat. But yeah, you know, you, you do those kind of things. Okay, I did attend a funeral for a leading member of our community who had been a, a member of this community for many many years. Uh, well, both the Warren Fox, but this this funeral was was for Don Shank. And I think the Shank brothers have been involved in our community and their family for many, many years. Uh, Shank and Kretz, uh, their farming operation, and all of those types of things that they've done here. Uh, the chain gang at the, at the school during the school football games where Mr. and Mr. Shank for, for a long, long time. And so I did, I did have the opportunity to attend his funeral this weekend. And um, we, we gave him quite the send off. And I think it, it, it was a good thing to recognize him and m prominent members of our community. We seem to lose more and more. And also Hank Kuyper has passed away. Uh, he was a prominent member of the El Centro community, but also county uh, from county supervisor. And so, uh, and, he, and he, he passed away at 80, so. And then also I'd just like to announce that the Doves will be having their event and it's Donors of Valley Endeavors this weekend uh, at, the, um, at the Stockman's Club and that's a fundraising event to, to give money out to charities within the Valley. It should be a fun event. I'm not sure any tickets are available. I think they may be sold out. I think they said they had 500 people coming. Uh, Donnie and I have been chosen as co kind of masters of ceremony and so, but Donnie's going to be taking the lead and doing most of that Is while I'm going out having more fun. Huh? He's more of a master than yes, you. Yes, more of a master than me. Yes, yes, he is. In a variety of different ways. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So with that said, I, I, would I would like to commend the city staff on all the work they've been doing. I've seen some fires happen. I've seen some things go on this last month. Uh, police activity, everything that's been going on. So I would like to commend them for their efforts out there and all the things that they do every day. So with that, I will go to item number eight. No, item number nine, city attorney report. No report. Okay.
And then I will go to item number 10, which is the city clerk report. No report. All right, no report for either of those. And so we will go to an adjournment then. And our next regular meeting will be April the 5th. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you very much, the members of the audience.